Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim for The Real Sports Talk. You can hit me up on Twitter at CashKelly underscore TRST. What we're going to do is obviously I'm not doing the Cleveland Indians preview tonight. That is the next team up in the 30 clubs recaps. I think for the most part what I'm going to do is I'm going to do those recaps during the week because in between the Super Bowl and the NFL playoffs, in between that period and MLB season and NBA playoffs, there's not really a ton to talk about during the week. So that's when I do that. During the weekend, though, you have some marquee NBA matchups. Like, we do our game of the week, or we're trying to do game of the week. It's been every other week so far, but I think that for the most part from now on, it will be game of the week. And I think we, myself and KJ, will be doing a Heat versus Lakers video on Sunday, so check that out. I want to, on the weekends, focus more on talking about the NBA, maybe doing some NFL off-season videos, and then during the week, still doing the baseball. So everyone's team will still get covered. We'll still be having the best baseball preview. Believe me, it's worth the wait, and it's worth watching every video because there is no outlet in the world, that not just on the Internet, not just on YouTube, anywhere that gives you a legit 40 minute preview where we're breaking down each aspect of your team. I know the White Sox won last night was only 18 minutes. Part of that was because I was alone, KJ and Justin were not able to make it in the video and another part of it was I was sick and I kinda just wanted to be done with the video. So I apologize to White Sox fans if that one didn't make the cut but uh, if you have any other questions about the White Sox feel free to message me because I can talk about baseball forever. What I want to talk about in this video is Rajon Rondo trade rumors. I know it happened a couple days ago. I just haven't had the chance to react because uh, I've been hanging out with friends and uh, going to school and everything. So obviously I don't have a ton of time to make these videos. Chris Broussard the other day, and, and it's not like we haven't heard this before, but he reported that the Celtics are at aggressively pursuing a trade of Rajon Rondo and that he isn't getting along with Doc Rivers and other players. Doc Rivers said this in response. He was not happy about this at all. Doc Rivers said, in all, t in all that time, we did not once talk about any trades. That was not one single thing Rajon Rondo about Rajon Rondo that crossed my desk. My relationship with Rajon is as strong as it's ever been. Our communication has never been better. I want him here. I can't say with almost 100% certainty that he will be here with us when the season ends. I'm tired of this stuff and it is not fair. And to a level that makes sense. Now we do not know what their uh, front office is doing. Their front office may very well be pursuing a trade of Rajon Rondo or they may have sent something out or tipped off some teams. Hey, we're not going to call you up and say Yo, we're going to give you this, this, and this, or give, give me this, this, and this, and we'll give you Rajon Rondo. But, and I heard Stephen A. Smith say this, that I gave in, I watched a first take video when I was looking at this article to do some research, and for once, Skip Bayless didn't say anything too idiotic, and Stephen A. Smith, when he just sticks to straight reporting basketball, I still think is one of the best. When he's trying to fight Skip Bayless, it gets annoying. But what he said is essentially that... Danny Ainge is not someone that you want to trust and that Doc Rivers may think that this isn't true but it could very well be true it and one of the questions that was posed to him is isn't that kind of your job as a GM and it is Danny Ainge is doing his job if he says oh yeah we're looking we're looking to trade Rajon Rondo away well then it takes down Rajon Rondo's value in a trade because other teams know that you want to get rid of the guy and it's really hard to imagine for a point guard that's like 25 or 26 years old, I forget his exact age, who's getting triple doubles. I mean, how many point guards of his height get triple doubles that you're looking to move this guy? So to say that you're looking to trade him, I guess might not be the way to phrase it, but that is essentially what they're doing. Danny Ainge had this quote, He's our best player and the most important part of our future. There's no way we're actively trying to trade Rondo. That makes no sense, no logical sense. Skip Bayless, I'll give him one, one piece of credit here. He said, the most important part of this quote is that they're not actively trying to pursue, pursue a trade. Not actively. That they could still have done it and they still might do it before the trade deadline. I don't take a lot of stock into what Skip Bayless says. Really, for the most part, I take none because I think he's a terrible NBA mind. But... That one thing he said made sense. 
He is our best player and he's most important to our future. Well, that could mean a ton of things, though. And Skip Bayless also said this. I'll give him credit. He did a decent job in this video. He said, he's our best player. Well, that sounds like you're trying to hype the guy up to make a trade. I don't know if that's what it really is because, for the most part, GMs will admit that someone's their best player. But he could very well say, oh, no, Paul Pierce is our best player. Even though, at this point, I think we all know that that's not true. Paul Pierce has been in the NBA long enough. He's a Hall of Famer. He's spent his whole career with the Celtics. That if Danny Ainge says that, no one's really going to argue it. And the thing that I look at in this quote is where he says he's the most important part to our future. That can mean a lot of things. That can mean they plan on locking him up and making him the guy to build around for the future. Or it could mean that what we get in return for him in a trade is what's going to be the most important part to our future. Stephen A. Smith had this to say, Rajon Rondo hates losing and cannot be a part of the rebuilding process. So... If they decide this offseason, this run is over, which I think we all kind of know it is with the big three. And looking back, the biggest piece that they... Think about some of the pieces they traded away in these trades. They traded away Jeff Green, who they now have back. And while if they kept Kendrick Perkins last year, they could have probably gone back to the finals potentially. I don't know if they would have beat the Heat or the Bulls, but they would have had a much better chance. They got Jeff Green back, who they traded away for. They traded his rights to the at that time SuperSonics for the fifth. He was the fifth pick. They traded him away for Ray Allen. They traded away Gerald Green. What did Gerald Green ever do in the NBA besides be in a couple dunk contests with cupcakes? And ultimately, he bounced around with a few teams: the T Wolves, the Rockets, a few other teams, and never really did anything in the NBA. So it's not like they gave up anything huge. They won a championship. They got back to another championship. It all worked out. And it, really, the run lasted longer than I think most people originally thought it would because the NBA at this point is a young man's game. Kevin Durant is under 20. Think about all this. Besides Kobe, Dirk, and um, Dwayne Wade, like, the top 10 players are all under age, like, besides, and LeBron James is 27. For the most part, besides that, all the other guys are under 25. You, you're talking about guys like, just to name a few, Chris Paul's under 27, I believe, or he's right at 27. Uh, Kevin Durant is, the, the list goes on. So, I think that it's a young man's game so to have that have worked for as long as it did and that was a four or so year run I think it actually ended up working out pretty well and they don't look back I mean Al Jefferson did alright but it was worth trading him away to get Kevin Garnett for sure I'm getting off tro off topic though so the first thing that I've heard about who they could potentially get back in the trade is Pau Gasol and the one thing that just doesn't make any sense to me, Pau Gasol makes $19 million this year, so they'd have to take on a decent amount of that, and he's going to make $19 million next year. If the Lakers got Pau Gasol, were able to keep Andrew Bynum and, or, or go trade for Dwight Howard, which would involve trading Andrew Bynum most likely, well, actually for sure likely, then it, it works out perfectly, and the Lakers once again are, are there to win a title. For the Celtics, what sense does it make to pay this guy $19 million next season to have him, and he's declining in my mind, he's not necessarily, he was never really a physical center, or big man, I should say, not center, power forward, and he's 31 years old, he doesn't give you more of an impact than Rajon Rondo. What? Why would you pick up nineteen million dollars for a guy that isn't better than like a one of the top three point guards? No, I'll make. It's tough to evaluate where Rajon Rondo is right now. He's one of the top two or three, but in reality, he's probably the fourth behind uh, Chris Paul, Derrick Rose, and Darren Williams. I think you could certainly make a case he's better than Darren Williams, though. But why would you do that to go get Pau Gasol? Another guy that you could think about is Monte Ellis. Monte Ellis is 28 years old. He makes a lot of money. And while he, I, I love watching the Warriors, I was actually just watching the Sixers and Warriors game. I love watching the Warriors. I love watching that fast-paced style. And I love, I'm a big fan of Monte Ellis and the style that they run there. And they have the nicest uniforms in the NBA. I love those throwbacks. But overall, why would you trade a 25-year-old who's more efficient, 
except for he, he's not a great three-point shooter. Besides that, why would you go ahead and make that trade? What does it accomplish for you that... I mean, Monte Ellis isn't better than him already. There's a lot of people, I was reading the comments on this video that, and on the article that believe that Rajon Rondo hasn't even hit his prime yet. And Monte Ellis is right there, and he's a really solid player in the league. But he's not necessarily the most efficient. He's not a good defender, and Rajon Rondo is a pretty solid defender. So overall, it really doesn't make sense. He's not going to get you the type of rebound numbers that Rajon Rondo somehow does. He's not as good as a distributor as Rajon Rondo. So really, I don't see a package out there. You would have to get really creative, in my mind, to find something that added up to being worth what Rajon Rondo is worth. So in all likelihood, you're not going to find that. I think that um, it's going to be really tough to find a match to get good value for him, which is why it doesn't really make any sense to trade him. That means for me that it's time to get a new team around him, which means in all likelihood you're going to have to trade away Paul Pierce's big contract and probably take on another big contract, but hopefully you can get enough salary relief. And then in all likelihood you're going to have to trade away Kevin Garnett unless you can get really creative. In terms of trading away Ray Allen, Ray Allen, to me, it, it wouldn't make any sense to trade him away because he's one of those guys who is very valuable to your team, but to another team, until you see him play for your team, you see the leadership and everything that he provides, that late game presence as a big shot, but the problem is he's older. It wouldn't make a ton of sense to trade him because you're not going to get nearly the value that he brings to your team in return. So they might as well just keep him. He's in great condition. I I know he's like 36 years old, but from everything I've seen, the shot is the last thing to go. That's what they always say. I think he could play another three or four years close to this level he's at. He is one of the guys, one of the few guys in the NBA that if he decides to, he could play into his early 40s. If the C's can move some of these guys and get rid of some of the contracts. Paul Pierce has got to be gone, and I respect the hell out of what Paul Pierce has done. He's a Hall of Famer, no doubt. He's been there through the good and bad times with the Celtics, and you're probably going to have to trade Jermaine O'Neal, who isn't a huge cap hit, but to move him out would make sense for what I'm about to say, and it would still get some cap room out. And that, you for sure keep Rajon Rondo and uh, Ray Allen, and you have the potential of keeping Kevin Garnett, because at that, you could build around a big four which is what you already have but you could build another big three with Allen and KG and you could go and attempt to sign Dwight Howard. If you can't get Dwight Howard and, and maybe even Dwight Howard would consider this which would be even if KG, KG is not there play with Rondo and Allen. I don't know if that's real enticing to him because there's a lot of questions about Rondo and how long he's going to be there and also, there's a lot of questions about how, how, I mean, at age 36, there's going to be questions about anyone. How long can they keep playing? But I, I think for sure going to Boston would be a better option than going to Brooklyn to go play for the Nets. Because, let's be honest, the best thing about going to the Nets, I hear people say, well, you have one of the best point guards in the NBA and you have the best center by far in the NBA. I think the second best player in the NBA, personally, in Dwight Howard why Why wouldn't they be able to win anything? It's just, As we saw last year, on a Miami Heat team with more depth than what the Nets would potentially have because they would either lose Brook Lopez via free agency or trade him away, and then they would have to trade away all their draft picks, which would be relatively high considering the Nets are already not a very good team. I don't understand. You're not going to win going to the Nets because LeBron and Wade had a pretty solid team around him, and it's much improved this year with guys like Shane Battier, Mike Miller for a full season. They couldn't even get a title, and a lot of that had to do with LeBron James choking, but they weren't able throughout the entire season to maintain a consistent level early on that made me believe that they were going to go to the NBA Finals. I didn't believe that they were for sure going to go to the NBA Finals until after that Sixers series. When they beat my Sixers, I was... I was disappointed, but I was like, I, I knew it was going to happen, so I, I didn't get my hopes up too much. I was happy that the Sixers even made the playoffs after just an atrocious year with Eddie Jordan. But the point is, just going with Darren Williams, I mean, Darren Williams is a hell of a player, 
But just going with Darren Williams is not going to be enough to win your championship. So the only reason he would be going to Brooklyn would be for the kind of the, the limelight part. And in Brooklyn, it's, it's not New York City. I know they're trying to play it out like it is. It's it's a nice place to go to. I've never been there personally. But it's you're not going to get the type of buzz that you would if you went to the New York Knicks, like Jeremy Lin is or uh, Mello and Stat did when they both went there. You're not going to get that type of buzz going to Brooklyn. The idea that, oh, I get to go play with Jay-Z who owns a half of a percent of the team. I don't even know why that is a bargaining point for them. Just going to the Nets overall, the only reason you would be doing that, I guess, is to play in a big market and get your face up on billboards and everything. But winning would not be that. If you go to Boston, it's a big city. There's a lot of pressure on you. But if you go to Boston, then... You could join up, you could join forces with a good team, have a better chance at winning. You're still going to get a lot of shoe deals and everything because the Celtics have a big fan base across the nation. I think that that would be the better move overall for Dwight Howard. I don't know if that's what he would overall do, but we'll see. And uh, going to Dallas might not be the greatest option because I think you see that that team has kind of done what they're going to do. They won a championship, and now Jason Kidd is old, probably in his last season. Uh, I know that they've talked about getting Darren Williams, but Lamar Odom hasn't worked out. Tyson Chandler's gone. Brendan Haywood's a nice player, but uh, in all likelihood, he would lose most of his minutes or potentially not even be back with the team if they maybe they'd do a sign trade and send him down to Orlando. So I think that maybe going to Boston would be the best option. I don't think it's likely, though. If that is not able to happen, then it is time, I think, to blow it up. Uh... For me, I, I think that that would be the best option that you have at that point. The question is with Rajon Rondo, is if you were able to get Dwight Howard, is could he handle being that number two guy? Because he's never going to be a bigger face than Dwight Howard because he's not even the best point guard in the NBA. And Dwight Howard's one of the top five players in the NBA. And a, a lot of people's mind... Rajon Rondo's just inside the top five point guards in the NBA, and that's not trying to take away from Rajon Rondo. But I think the point is that we hear that he does not, and Stephen A. Smith also said this, that he does not like when other players get preferential treatment on the team. And Dwight Howard essentially is going to get that because you're going to do whatever you have to do to lure him there. So that would have to be a thing where before he signs or you say, Rajon, he's going to get special treatment, and you're going to have to deal with it whether you like it or not. And See how he handles that. Or does Rajon Rondo expect the team to just try and get a bunch of really good role players and everything that fits how the team concept worked and just try and win a championship like that? I hate to break it to you, but at this stage in the NBA, you cannot build your team singularly around one point guard with the exception of Derrick Rose because... Derrick Rose is Derrick Rose. And expect to win a championship. And I don't know, without getting another superstar, if the Bulls really can win a championship. you got to have a two or a, th a shooting guard or a small four, I think is what at this point is the best thing to build your team around. We see it with Kobe Bryant. We see it with LeBron James. Those are the best type of players to build your team around. And then go get a second superstar for them, like Dwayne Wade, like essentially what Pau Gasol was when the Lakers originally acquired him and they ended up winning the championship. So, I don't think that if you can... I don't think Rajon Rondo would understand that if you only get one other good player, that you're going to just... You're not going to be good enough to win a title like that. You have to... Right now, the way the NBA is, you have to have two superstars, and you got to have depth. And that's what's making the Miami Heat so dangerous this year, and that's what may, is making the Oklahoma City Thunder so dangerous this year, is they meet both those criteria. And in the Heat's case, they might not have three superstars, depending on your opinion of Chris Bosh, but he's played like a third superstar this year, so that's that. Overall, I think Rayshon Rondo will get traded, and I think that that's a shame, because if the real reason that he isn't getting traded is because he's not getting along with some of the players, like we've heard reports out of Boston, well, then... Okay, half those players are going to be gone in a couple years. And if he's not getting along with Doc Rivers, we've heard that Doc Rivers is probably in his last year. They, he's been saying that for a couple seasons now. I don't know if he ever is really going to retire or whatever. I know his son's coming to the NBA, big star over with uh, Duke now, Austin Rivers. 
So maybe he wants to stick around and try and get him. I, I, I don't know what the deal is. I think Rajon Rondo is gone after the... I don't know when, whether it be before this trade deadline or after the season. But uh, I think overall that Rajon Rondo is going to go somewhere. And whether... I, I think that it might make most se the most sense for them to just wait for this offseason. Because maybe if Darren Williams decides to go somewhere else, but the ma the Magic or... The Magic decide we still can have a chance at Dwight Howard if we get him another superstar. Jameer Nelson's a nice point guard. Um, he had one really nice season. He hasn't been quite the same since because of injuries and other things. Maybe if they decide, if we can go get Rondo, maybe we can convince him to stay. Or maybe the Mavericks even decide to do that if Jason Kidd retires. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see where both Rajon Rondo and Dwight Howard go. Overall, I'm Tim. Hit me up on Twitter. I'll catch you guys later.